इन दिस वीडियो वी शेल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट ऑनसेबल लर्निंग और द वेरियस ऑनसेबल टेक्निक्स इन अदर वर्ड्स ऑनसेबल टेक्निक्स आर नथिंग बट सम हाइब्रिड टेक्निक्स टू इम्प्रोवाइज योर मॉडल एक्यूरेसी नाउ सो फार यू माइट हैव ऑलरेडी नोन द बेसिक डिफरेंसेज बिटवीन द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ मशीन लर्निंग you might have also known about what exactly is supervised learning what is unsupervised learning what are classification and regression problems now let's try to understand why do we have the ensemble concept there are many times which uh, basically there are many times uh, when we start implementing a code or when we start working on a real life problem or a real time scenario we might come across a situation where some of our stand alone models are not working properly now what do you mean by stand alone models let me take a small example and explain you just imagine you are working on a customer churn prediction problem or a simply breast cancer prediction problem that means you have some patients data who are suffering from breast cancer and some customers or patients data who are not suffering from breast cancer now just imagine you have already built your classification model which is on knn or decision trees or naive base or svm whatever you have tried so far you are not able to increase your models accuracy beyond 80% for an example so in that case what you need to do is you need to combine different models to create a hybrid model simple so hybrid technique is nothing but ensemble technique so ensemble learning or ensemble learning is the mechanism to use multiple algorithms together to have a better prediction than the individual models now just imagine let's say we extract the features from a use case and try to check the model's accuracy or behavior individually so in this example what we have done is we have a case study like breast cancer prediction we have different features what are the blood sugar level of that patient what is the age what is the gender and so many things right and we have built a decision tree classifier and now the accuracy is 69% svm we built but it was again 75% and logistic regression also 65% so this is a scenario what we need to do is we need to create a hybrid model out of it so you can see this example where there are multiple features and you have multiple models each model is failing failing as in it's not having a great accuracy what we need to do is we can create a voting ensemble or some sort of voting technique that we take from different models and based on that voting we give the output just imagine this scenario for example you have model 1 which is decision tree model 2 which is knn model 3 which is svm model 4 which is uh, naive base model 5 which is something else now this is giving you for a new image or a, for a new data it is predicting that the patient is suffering from breast cancer patient is suffering from breast cancer not suffering from breast cancer not suffering from breast cancer and breast cancer now if you take a voting out of it out of 5 cases 3 three cases is where the models are predicting as breast cancer so your final output will also be breast cancer this is all about ensemble technique now talking more about ensemble techniques there are majorly two different concepts in ensemble technique before getting into that we will try to understand why do we use ensemble learning so the first usage or use of ensemble learning is it is used for better accuracy or low error which is honestly speaking ensemble learning will definitely give better results as compared to stand alone models at least in 80 90% of the cases higher consistency because it avoids overfitting what is overfitting giving you a small refresher overfitting is a scenario where your training accuracy is high your test accuracy is low that means your model is well equipped with most of the information from the training data but on the test data it just doesn't work okay 
and the third point is reduces bias and variance errors these are the three different important usage or important reasons because of which we use ensemble learning now we'll move on to when and where do we use ensemble learning again we know when the single model overfits when a single model overfits then we can move into the ensemble part results worth the extra training what does this this means always remember a complex model ensemble is nothing but a complex model right it is a combination of multiple plane models right voting ensemble or something like that a ensemble model will definitely take more time to process the data so computational time will be more memory consumption will be more these are the drawbacks of ensemble learning so if you don't have any problem with respect to memory and the time then you can go for ensemble learning and it can be used for both classification and regression nothing to worry about now talking about the different ensemble techniques the two major type of ensemble techniques are bootstrap aggregation which is also called as bagging and the second type is boosting we also have it covered in the next session in the next slide now what exactly is bagging how oh, what are the different bagging algorithms there are there are many bagging algorithms the most classic example of bagging algorithm is random forest so we first have bag decision trees then we have random forest and then we have extra trees we'll quickly give you an example of random forest or any of these bagging algorithms on how basically bagging works okay now let's try to see this see this uh, diagram which will give us more idea about bagging you can see data set what exactly is this data set this is your original data that you have right let's say assuming that you have 10000 or 1000 records the first step is dividing the data into training and test simple so let's say 800 training data and 200 test data right now what happens is it is telling that if you have 800 training data create multiple bags so the first step is creating multiple bags how many bags that is a parameter which you need to define how many bags do you need so let's say i am defining five bags five bags okay now i am defining five bags now okay let me just draw one more here so these are the five bags that i have 1 2 3 4 5 what it basically tells you that randomly populate the data points into multiple bags so just imagine from 800 you populate here 200 you populate here 100 you populate here 600 here 200 here 300 which basically means you have to randomly populate the different data points into your bags and based on that you need to train your model you can see here the explanation randomly selected data points or row you can see now randomly selected data points or row one by one into the bags repetitions allowed that means you have 800 data points when you are creating your bags repetitions are allowed a data point which goes into bag 1 can also be a part of bag 2 can also be a part of bag 5 right so you have one bag two bag three bag four bag five bag just ignore this one so you have five different bags now once your bag is ready what you need to do is you need to take a voting out of it which bag is predicting what let's say bag 1 has predicted cancer bag 2 cancer bag 3 non cancer non cancer non cancer so your final output will be non cancerous simple this is the simple explanation of ensemble methods especially the bootstrap aggregation part 
after that we will move into boosting what exactly is boosting again boosting is also an ensemble technique but in boosting the way we train our model is little bit different boosting is used to create a collection of predictors in this technique learners are learned sequentially with early learners fitting simple models to the data and then analyzing the data for errors consecutive trees or random sample are fit and at every step the goal is to improve the accuracy from the prior tree when an input is misclassified by a hypothesis its weight is increased so that the next hypothesis is more likely to classify it correctly this process converts weak learners into better performing model now have a look at this particular image this is how boosting works the first step remains the same you have your training data and your test data fine after training data let's say you are creating your first bag and okay we'll take examples to understand we have 1000 200 and 800 now my training data has 800 records simple when i'm creating my first bag let's say randomly select points one by one into the bags so repetitions allowed let's say i randomly select 200 data points simple i randomly select 200 data points now what now i will train the model i will train it so my model is created m1 now on top of my model i will test with the training data i will test it how the model performance is we will be calculating the training accuracy and in the training data set what are the misclassifications we will calculate so we will be calculating the training data we have to test it and then data points with wrong prediction let's say this is your bag one then becomes creates your bag two so into your bag two again randomly data points will go let's say you are defining 100 and the misclassifications that happen from the first bag so just imagine this way you have your data training data test data from training data randomly one bag will be created random points goes there that model is tested on training data the misclassifications goes into the second bag along with that some inputs from the training data so bag misclassifications back to back to misclassifications back three back three misclassifications back four no your misclassifications are also you know converged together with the random data points from the training data and this is how your weak learners learn this that's the reason it is called the process converts weak learners into a better performing model this is all about your boosting type now what are the different types of bagging and boosting algorithm that we have we have bagged decision trees all features are used for splitting a node this means if you implement this the four bags that you will create all the features are used to split a node that means if you have 10 features all the 10 features will be required to split a node now just imagine this thing you have 1000 data points 800 training and 200 test now from 800 let's say here goes 100 here goes 100 here goes 300 here goes 500 for example so for all these data points all the features will be considered to create the split let's say this is a decision tree so all the features are considered random forest subset of features are used at random out of the total and the best split feature from the subset is used random forest also will have the same concept multiple blacks random data points but random data points and random features also let's say you have eight features here six features here ten features here five features here so as it is completely random in nature your nodes are split differently 
that is the difference between bagged decision tree and random forest we also have extra trees in bagging and in boosting we have ada boost and gradient boosting stochastic gradient boosting and we also have extreme gradient boosting which is also called as xg boost that's all about the theoretical concepts behind ensemble techniques in our next video i shall also be showing you the practicals on how these codes are implemented how one basic example uh, output changes from model to model and all those things so we have already understood the theoretical concepts behind ensemble learning however each algorithm differs from each other in a unique way uh, in case you want to know more about those algorithms probably i can talk about those uh, algorithms separately in another video but for the time being let's get started with the code part so the first part of the code is we are mounting the google drive because we have data in our google drive so let it run and after that here are the different classifiers that i'm going to use let me just allow it doesn't really take a lot of time but somehow it's taking so my all the libraries are imported now the next task is to read the data so you can see here i am reading the data which is social network ads i have user id gender age estimated salary and purchased now what i am doing is i am just doing a purchased basically means whether the customer has purchased or not that's it right and these are my different features that i have along with gender so it's a very small and toy data set kind of concept where we are just using a toy data set but our major task is to implement our ensemble learning models our ensemble learning algorithm and see the differences right what's behind those algorithms probably could be a part of another video but let's get started with it so here we are popping the user id now i am left out with gender age estimated salary and my y variable so these are my three x variables that i have i am simply replacing my male and female with one and zeros this is as simple as one hot encoding right if i do this now this is how my data looks like right now now males are one and females are zero that's it so this is my new column which is gender i have age and estimated salary so how many features do i have three features x1 x2 and x3 now using features gender age for prediction of purchase level let's say gender and age using this i'm going to predict the purchased okay so let's say gender and age and then what i have done is c equals to 7 max features equals to 3 here i'm calling my k fold model selection k fold which basically means i'm going to run the model for 10 different k folds i hope everybody knows about k fold cross validation right k fold cross validation is nothing but normally when we have data what we do is we do split into training and test right are we 100% sure that this is the best fit or this is the best split no so usually what we do is we do multiple such training test splits and test our model or how how the model is performing here how it is performing here how it is performing here this step is nothing but k fold cross validation that means you have to test your model with different combinations of training and test samples and if i run this my accuracy okay shuffle is false okay let me just remove it i don't need the seed done so my accuracy for k n n algorithm is 80.5 Similarly I will also run it for my decision tree let me just remove seeds and all these things for decision tree my accuracy is 
so let's try to store our results as well see from honestly speaking from the code point of view it's going to be very simple to understand and write codes you just need to understand the mathematics behind these algorithms so if you are clear with the mathematics part then probably you will be able to understand all these things so these are my model outputs let me just store it so that we can compare it later now that we are running a bagging technique so let's say i'm running a decision tree classifier and this decision tree classifier this is also a cart model In this decision tree classifier i'm passing it to my bagging classifier so here i'm calling my bagging classifier otherwise called as bagged decision trees right this is where your all the features goes into the different bags right somebody might also ask you the difference between bag decision tree and random forest try to understand this difference in bag decision trees the bags that you create all the bags are fed with different training data but all the features but in random forest the training data is also randomly sampled and the features are also random in nature right that is the only difference now my bagged classifier is also giving me 80.25 not great so eighty point two five percent okay first one was eighty point five or it was eighty point two five eighty point five bad decision tree is also giving me same similarly i'll also run it for my random forest okay let me just turn off the random seed as we don't need it random tree random forest should at least give me 83 else i will be disappointed random forest is running oh it's given 79 okay let's try to remove okay 500 trees and still 79.75 let me just reduce the number of trees because sometimes what happens is when you increase okay it's still the same number of splits okay there could be some issues anyways it happens as i told you that 80 90 percent of the cases your ensemble techniques are better than your standalone techniques but this could be just a scenario where your standalone techniques are performing better okay let me just note down random forest is giving me 79.75 percent okay done now our next step is extra trees classifier run it we shouldn't have run it for 500 trees but it's okay my extra trees is giving me 78.5 even worse extra trees classifier 79.8.5 okay now that we have we are done and dusted with the bagging techniques what does boosting do now before before getting into boosting part let me just tell you that when our xg boost was introduced for the first time most of the people started using xg boost blindly because xg boost is nothing but extreme gradient boosting it is on the principle of gradient boosting but with added benefits to it xg boost itself is a very powerful algorithm or a library and we use it we used to use it in almost every kaggle competitions that people were doing and many people have also got you know first prizes using xg boost, mo boost model as well so i do have a lot of uh what is that a lot of uh, faith and a lot of uh, uh lot of faith in xg boot let's just get it get into this so here i'm running add a boost again i'll turn off my random seed okay and my add a boost should give me 83 percent for sure i can bet on that add a boost is giving me 83. okay it takes a lot of time because of this number of trees i should have 83 percent so add a boost is giving me 83 percent 
so boosting is giving you better results in this case again same with gradient boosting i'll also do the same thing here i'll also run it for 500 trees and here also i already have the results so gradient boosting g boosting it is giving me 80.5 now i will be applying a voting ensemble so you can see the code till now is almost same each and every code is same here we are just changing the classifier names right now comes the manual approach of calling a voting ensemble technique the one that we studied in the presentation the first graph feature labels now this is this part voting ensemble that means manually calling different models and then calling a voting out of it so here i have defined all my libraries here i am calling my k fold cross validation model 1 model 2 model 3 and then here i'm calling my voting classifier and then i am calling my voting uh, sorry estimators as expected the voting classifier is giving me voting classifier is basically not a boosting technique it could come under your bagging technique last but not the least we are also going to run xgb is not defined okay so we'll try to check import xg boost okay so it's very simple import xg boost as xgb and then i'm just calling my xgb classifier and then running my xgb classifier on the same configurations and it is giving me 80.5 extreme gradient boosting is also not giving me good results and that is that is one of the reasons why we have multiple algorithms right if for each and every case xgboost would have given you better results then why do we have the need of other classifiers now but honestly speaking i can bet on this thing that if you take your xgboost model and try to do hyperparameter tuning you can definitely end up getting very good results so the thumb rule here is xgboost is better but we should always try multiple algorithms before coming to a conclusion these are just some examples apart from that there are many 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 other algorithms to try it out individually speaking knn knife bias uh, svms logistic regression decision trees random forest extra trees uh, bagging classifier extra trees i already talked about repetition um, ada boost gradient boost xg boost cat boost so many so many algorithms are there it's always advisable for us to try multiple algorithms and then come to a conclusion on which one is working fine and once you finalize it from this particular class what we need to take inputs is that the best performing model is probably ada boost or a voting classifier now what i will do now is i'm going to take ada boost and perform hyperparameter tuning and i will perform hyperparameter tuning and i can definitely guarantee you that i will be able to reach an accuracy of at least 88 percent to 90 percent so apart from that uh, as you already know that we also have a video on hyperparameter tuning on my channel so and you must have also seen that i have started uploading more and more machine learning videos now i know that this is an end-to-end -end ensemble learning video of 30 minutes definitely there will be videos explaining about each and every type of these classifiers so stay tuned keep uh, you know keep supporting my channel and if you haven't seen the hyperparameter tuning video please go back and check it out you can also find the link in the description below that's all about this particular video on ensemble learning and uh, yeah just keep supporting and don't forget to comment it down in my video in case you have any requirements that's it for this video see you in the next video